Hello everyone. I saw a few TikTok videos the other day from some medical professionals who were ringing a five alarm fire regarding the healthcare crisis. They were saying in their videos that long-term care facilities are at capacity at a breaking point, unable to admit any new patients. Patients are being forced to stay in the or sleep in the hallways, that the equipment is broken or outdated, that the facilities are understaffed and so it's at critical mass at this point. If you are retirement age, this video is particularly important to you. I'm an estate planning attorney, so part of my responsibility is not only helping people decide how they want their assets to be distributed, but it's also helping them plan for retirement in the event that they become incapacitated, what services are available to them, whether they will be in a long-term care facility or will they be cared for at home and helping them plan for that. With that being said, there's also planning for Medicaid eligibility. Will they be Medicaid eligible? Medicaid is an entitlement program, but not everyone is entitled to it. You have to have a certain amount of assets in order to be entitled to Medicaid. But with that, if you have too many assets, that can put you beyond the scope of being able to access Medicaid. This is important because America made certain promises. It made promises that if a person worked and devoted their life 30, 40, 50 years in the system, that certain things will be available to them upon retirement, upon their later years in life, that they would have access to health care, that they'll have financial freedom, that they'll have more uh, resources available to them as, as, as a gift to them for all of their dedication of being taxpayers and working in the system. We're soon finding out that those promises are not available to many Americans, Americans who have done the right thing. I have firsthand experience with this because I'm an estate planning attorney. So I see firsthand the what the years of sacrifice have yielded. And in many, in many ways, they've yielded financial freedom, um, real estate, the money in the stock market, um, tangible assets. But none of that means anything if you cannot access a hospital, if you're in need of care. And we're seeing that more and more. So what are Americans supposed to do if they dedicated and devoted to the system, if they need medical care, what are they supposed to do? The alternative is becoming a medical tourist, not relying on the American system to save you, but seeking the care outside of the US, which has been the answer for thousands and maybe even millions at this point of Americans who have become medical tourists. I began a medical tourist business two years ago in Colombia, and it was an opportunity for Americans who needed to access health care, who were unable to access it in the United States, to travel to Colombia to see doctors, to get medication, to do diagnostics, care that they would not be able to afford in the United States, either because they didn't have medical insurance or because they couldn't afford it. So that's why I started the Medical Tourist Group to go to Colombia particularly because Colombia is world renowned for having robust and advanced healthcare. It outranks both Canada and United States. Colombia is number 18 when it comes to healthcare. Canada and US around 30 something as of 2020, 24. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but needless to say, Colombia outranks both of those first world nations. So I started the medical tourism for people who needed to access healthcare. I went to Colombia, my mother went to Colombia, and she has an autoimmune condition. She was able to receive treatment that she would not be able to receive in the United States, do diagnostics that may have taken months to do, to complete, because of referrals, because of administrative things, because of location, accessibility, all of her diagnostics she was able to do in one location in one day. So just, just to give you an example of how accessible the healthcare is in the United States. And maybe she paid $100 for all of her diagnostics. 
also as it relates to implant she also needed an implant uh implant in the united states starts at five thousand dollars it cost her one thousand dollars in united in colombia so that is it's colombia is, is a beacon in that sense so if you're concerned about access and health care, then I invite you to begin thinking about becoming a medical tourism tourist. Number two, if you are of retirement age, I also want you to be thinking about the become aware of the possibility that if you need long term care, that that may not be available to you. Like I said, America made those promises, but we're soon finding out that America doesn't follow through on those promises that it apparently is just a marketing ploy and it doesn't mean anything when push comes to shove. If you're a retirement age and you thought that you would be able to access a medical facility, a long-term care facility, it may not be available to you. So you may have to seek alternative arrangements and retire abroad. So I also want you to be th begin thinking about that that might be a possibility if you want to retire comfortably and be able to access healthcare. Healthcare is a right in many countries. It's not a right in the United States. Also, if you are a caretaker, someone who has special needs, and that is the reason why you remain in the United States working. I know a gentleman who relocated his brother who was of retirement age, his special needs brother who was of retirement age to Columbia and enrolled him in a long-term care facility where there was 24-hour care, seven days a week care, three meals a day, occupational activities, all sorts of things for his brother to be able to participate in. And he said to me, if he left his brother in the United States, his brother would have ended up in the street begging and homeless. So he brought his brother to Colombia in order to be able to retire comfortably with dignity and grace. So if that's a concern for you, there are also alternatives for you. I want you to begin thinking about the possibility that you may not be able to retire comfortably in the United States, but that that doesn't mean that you should give up. That thousands and thousands more people are retiring abroad and if you are at a breaking point with the cost of living in the united states and all you have to rely on is your social security you could retire very comfortably in different countries you don't have to suffer in the u.s in order to live People are living in other countries and they're taking their U.S. currency and they're enjoying their life somewhere else. So this video is for several people to let you know that there is an alternative out there. If you know somebody that is struggling with retirement, with health care, share this video with them. Let them know that there are alternatives out there, that they don't have to remain in the United States and suffer and deal with the system that they can't fix, that they can receive healthcare abroad, that they can retire abroad with dignity, that they can bring their loved ones who have special needs and place them in f assisted living facilities um, in order that they can spend their last years with dignity and grace. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. This is indicative of the healthcare crisis and Americans having to find alternatives outside of the United States. The United States is, has no intent on fixing these problems, but there's no reason why you should remain and suffer and complain when there are resources available. I'll see you next time.